What's up, everyone? Welcome to this week's mindset video. And how do you work through pain and failure? Stick through today's episode because not only am I going to share with you a crazy and very heartfelt story that almost broke me, but I'm also going to share with you the number one way to guarantee that you not only work through pain and failure, but you learn how to embrace it to come out the other side as a better version of you. So let's dive into it. Now, if you've been following my journey for a while and listened to the last couple of episodes, I shared with you a period in my life where everything was very ego-based and I thought I was the shit. I'd just been named personal trainer of the year in Australia, in the entire country. I'd just been recognized in the US for having one of the most profitable fitness business models that there were. I was speaking in multiple masterminds in multiple countries and states all around the world. And I thought I was it and a bit. Fast forward a year later, literally almost to the day within a seven day period, my marriage of 13 years ended. My wife took my children with her from Thailand back to Australia, and I had no idea when or how I was going to see them again. And my landlord from one of my gyms decided to put me into bankruptcy because I had four and a half years left on a lease. It's a whole nother story, but they had the choice of basically to make me insolvent, which they did because they could afford to. That all happened in a seven day period, almost to the day, a year after Mr. Ego felt like he was it and a bit. And I'm sharing that with you because the pain that I went through that transition, not only shaped my character, allowed me to look at myself in ways that I probably wasn't willing to, to that extent, to deal with a level of pain that actually led me to not speak for a week. I didn't say a word to anybody. For the first time in my life, I would say I was the closest to being depressed. I have very strong opinions, my own opinions about depression, especially when it's not medically diagnosed. But for me, I didn't want to get out of bed. I had no clear direction. I'd lost everything that I'd spent close to 20 years building. It was a part of my identity. I'd gone from being this in my mind pin, right? I thought I was a fucking hero. And here I was crying my eyes out inside the car at the airport at Phuket, not knowing what the hell just happened, not knowing how I was going to get out of this and just clearly seeing this image. I tell it in my book and it still almost makes me teary of my little four-year-old just standing there waving at the gate sucking his fingers the way that he always used to do and not knowing why he was leaving his dad because he'd hardly seen his dad for four years and then he just spent every day with him for almost six months and then he was leaving. And it, it was probably the closest thing to something breaking me. I felt like I had a piece of me had broken and how I picked myself up through that process is what I'm going to share with you now because it's what allowed me to not only deal with that level of pain but it allowed me to also not just see failure as being inevitable. It allowed me to see all of those failures as opportunities that I could embrace, that I could learn from. And it's what I want to give you today. All right. Here I was literally in a five bedroom, where you'd call it a villa or a house in Phuket, rented it out, paid for the year, and I was on my own. And my ex, even at the time, that was a whole mess. She was in Europe, so I had an ex in Europe. I had a wife going back to Australia. I had three kids. I didn't know how I was going to see. I knew it was my daughter's birthday coming up, and I wasn't even allowed to speak to my kids at that point. My whole career had been based around building this particular type of fitness business, and here I was. I didn't know what the fuck I was going to do. Breathing was painful. Like just to take a full deep breath in was hard. I literally just, I couldn't see anything. And this is the first part I want to give you is that my favorite quote just kept ringing through to me. 
every day it kept ringing through to me. And it's literally how I started to rebuild was that for things to change, first, I must change. And I didn't know what I wanted to do for work. I didn't know when I was going to see my kids again. It was hard to breathe. But all of those things were out of my control to a certain extent. Like I couldn't solve them right there and then. I couldn't make them better right there and then. I couldn't remove the pain right there. So what could I do? And this is where the journey began. What could I focus on? What could I do? And keep in mind, I'd been doing a bunch of mindset work, seeing therapists, dealing with a whole bunch of shit to get to that stage in my life. Didn't change the giant ego that came with me. But this humbling experience was the beginning of me detaching myself from my ego forever. And when you have nothing and you have no direction and no clarity and all you have is all of the stories and the pain and everything else and the weight of shame and guilt and blame on top of you, shit is not easy. So again, what can I do? Where can I start? And this is what played out. And for the first five days, I couldn't speak. I didn't want to get out of bed. I was eating shit and just fucking lost. And then I slowly started to put pieces together. It would be my daily routine that would be step number one. What can I do within my day that I can control that in some ways helps me either feel better or work towards being better? I went right back to my Tony Robbins CDs that I had back then. I pulled out the CD case and this is only 10 years ago, right? And I pulled out the CD case and I'm like, cool, I'm going to start going through these every single day. I wasn't working at the time. I was consulting a couple of things online. I had a couple of programs that were selling online automatically. And yeah, I basically, cool, let me start there. Fitness, what could I do? I can train in the morning at the gym. I can, in the afternoon, go for a walk. I can go to the beach here. There were little things that I could start to do that I could see. Everything else, I couldn't see a way out. And half the time, I couldn't even see because the weight was so heavy. On top of me, like I said, it was hard to breathe. And I, I legitimately mean that. And I'm an asthmatic, right? But it was even harder than normal to breathe. And once I started to piece together my day, my perception and what I could see started to change. I could start to see little breaks. I could start to see little parts of me that, you know, for the week prior and everything else, I couldn't see anything. And as I could start to see little parts of me coming back and little thoughts, and I've always had a creative and a, a very optimistic mind. So I was always thinking about different things that I could start working towards and what I was going to do and how was I going to come back from this place? And that led me to step two that I want to give you. The quality of your life is going to be based on the quality of your answers. When I couldn't breathe and I couldn't move and I couldn't see, the only things that kept playing out in my mind, the only questions I was asking myself were keeping me even more stuck. Why did this happen? What went wrong? What did you do? What could you have done differently? All of these questions were just keeping me focused on everything that had happened and the situation that I was in. And it was only creating more pain. It was only keeping me more stuck. It was only keeping me in the same types of emotions. So then I flipped. Step one, controlling the things that I could control on my day. Step two, what can I focus on? What quality questions can I ask? Which would be like, cool, what do I want to do? Where do I want to go? Who do I want to be? What do I need to do to mend things with my ex-wife so I can start speaking to my kids again? What do I need to do in order for them to feel like their dad still loves them and still wants to be a part of their life, even though now we're apart permanently for the first time ever? And my son was almost nine, my daughter was seven, and my little man was four. They'd never been, they'd seen me go away on trips, but it was never a permanent break. What do I need to do to let them know that it's going to be okay? 
So again, that then led me to, okay, a list of things that I could start focusing on and I could start doing. Now, before I share the next step, you've got to understand based on maybe where you're at right now and also thinking about my situation, a lot of people can get to that point. And I see it with clients all the time and I help clients get to that point. But yet, when I have awareness and I can start to see things, if I don't now take action on those things, I am voluntarily keeping myself stuck in pain. I am the only one to fucking blame at that point. And then again, you live with more blame, more shame, more guilt, because you know what you should do, need to do, could do, but you're not fucking doing it. And for me to come back from that place of, I was making close to $200,000 a month. And here I was fucking bankrupt with bits of money coming in here and there with no idea how I was going to come out of this hole. None. Everything I had built, clients, relationships, everything gone. Like I said, that's another story. I think I've told it somewhere online. I think it's in my old podcast episode with like an hour and a half episode just on that. But the point being is that without taking action on these things, nothing would have changed, which means I wouldn't have got to step three. And step three was that my perspective started to shift. It didn't transform yet. It didn't ultimately change yet. It just started to shift. Suddenly I had a bit more space to breathe. Suddenly I could start to see little paths forward, even just little steps, little possibilities or little opportunities of ways forward. I started to repair my relationship with my kids because they didn't understand any of them what was going on. And then I started to work out how I could talk to my ex-wife and find a communication way and then do that consistently. And then I found a way of starting to make more money and starting to help more people build businesses that I built, right? They wanted my model, so it's cool. Here it finally is. And I started to build my way out of it. The other thing I started to do is I started to create really big fucking visions for myself. And the reason why I did that, all right, is that when you're at the bottom, all you've got is up. That's all you've got. You can't get any fucking lower, right? And some of you, regardless of how high you get up, you're still always looking down. Regardless of what you've done, you can lose 50 pounds. Oh, yeah, but I've got 50 more. Oh, but I didn't do that. Oh, but... Right? You still are programmed to look down. When you're at the fucking bottom, it's why most people sometimes have to wait till there's a catalyst for them to even make the changes they need. I don't want you to wait for that because it's too painful and too damaging. And sometimes there's no way back, especially if it's around health. But when you're at the bottom, you only get up. And the choice that you have at that point is how far up do you want to look? Because how far up you're going and are willing to look will determine how far you're going to go. I started to make claims to now my ex-second wife that for her 30th birthday, I would take her to Europe. And I would take her family to Europe and we'd all go business class and I would pay for the entire fucking thing. And keep in mind, during this period when she was in Europe, I lived off one toasted sandwich and a protein shake a day because I had coins in my gym bag left over from shakes that I was getting at the gym. And a toasted sandwich was 10 baht back then. So I could walk to 7-Eleven. I didn't ride because it saved money that I could keep in the bike for petrol. I would pay my 10 baht and they would toast the toaster sandwich for me there. I would have that and a protein shake. And that's all I could eat for 10 days because it's all I could afford. After a year prior, flying around the world and eating dinners for 1500 to two grand, there were nothing. Very humbling experience. And here I am in that place planning how I'm going to take my ex now, but my girl at the time and her family to your business class and we're going to travel around. You want to know the crazy thing? Three years after that, I did it. I did it. 
Patty Brittle did it. We went all through Italy and France for three and a half weeks. I paid for the entire thing. And it was a surprise for her 30th and her mom's 60th. I did it. And I sharing this with you because when I'm at the bottom and I'm looking up, like I said, your choice is how far up you want to look. But the most important aspect of all of this and why it's step number three I want to give you is it's my choice where I look. So if I'm starting to make a perspective shift, it's because I'm also starting to choose where I'm looking, what I'm focused on, where I want to go, the things that are in that direction versus the things that have been keeping me stuck in this direction, in a place that I don't want to be, which for me at the time was fucking rock bottom and just nothing but pain and heartache. And the amazing thing starts to change when your perspective changes. Your belief in a different reality starts to empower you to a different identity. I'm going to say that again because it is huge beyond belief when you can embrace this. And it's something that I teach in my five-step identity shift process. Something that I fucking live through had to find my way out of. When I can start to see and shift my belief in a different reality, I now can create a new identity. That little switch and shift is, imagine there was a boulder that was about to roll down a hill and you had one little locket right? But yet it was strong enough. It might've been small that was keeping the chain wrapped around the boulder from stopping it to roll. When you can unlock that little locket and the chain releases and that boulder can move at its free will with momentum, nothing is going to stop you from working towards being who you want to be. Nothing. But this little locket that most people are not willing to either identify, look at and see, Find the key for, which is you opening yourself up to believe in a new reality for yourself. People are so fucking attached to thinking that their current state or their current and past realities dictate their future reality. It couldn't be fucking further from the truth, but yet it's so ingrained in you that you fucking defend it. You will go to war for it consciously and unconsciously to protect it because it's what you know. It's the pain that you know versus the pain of potential fear, doubt, uncertainty, failure that you don't know that you're not willing to take, which then leads to step number four in this entire process. Being able now to operate as a new person from a new identity, starting to ingrain how this version of you wants to operate, how they think, what they focus on, what they do, the types of internal dialogue and conversations that this version of yourself has, this 2.0 you, how do they operate? And the more that we ingrain that operating system, the more that it becomes your default and the old one is gone, it disappears. I talked about this in my Breaking Limiting Beliefs video last week or the week before. Go check that out. For me, it was starting to see a different reality. It was starting to see that, hang on, I can operate as a new person, I can find a new identity. For years, my identity had been based in building this fitness empire and this type of business model and being this fucking version of myself that I thought was it and a bit to being completely humiliated and humbled and personally embarrassed with my actions and behaviors that led to that result of me losing everything in fucking seven days. It was all on me. I can blame lots of reasons why it happened 
and a lot of shit did happen to me, but it doesn't change my responsibility around any of it. To be able to then see a new me, a new identity, somebody that now could help other people do what I did when they couldn't see a way to do it, which then later down the track, past the consulting side of things with business models, it allowed me to see that a lot of entrepreneurs and a lot of people needed more help in dealing with pain, in dealing with failure, in dealing with mindset, in dealing with even being able to work through a process to become a better version of themselves, which has now led me to a career where I focus solely on that and a passion for being able to help people get out of pain and create possibilities. Get out of the pit and end up at the peak where they feel like they can not only see a better version of themselves, they can also start feeling that they are becoming and will continue to become the best version of themselves. Living a life of freedom where they're no longer bound to their past to limiting beliefs, to pain, to trauma, to old fucking stories that do nothing but keep you stuck in relationships where they're not empowered and they're not seen and they aren't showing up as the best version of themselves. Careers, businesses, right? All of these different things now that people have been able to create because I was willing to not only go through this process, but to share it the same way that I'm sharing it with you now. And I want to do that because I want you to see that the opportunity for you to work through these four steps is so simple. There's nothing in your way. And if you want help with it, I literally have a four-week process that I will take somebody through where you work through the five steps with me one-on-one. -on -one. If you're interested in that, let me know. I literally have three new people starting this week with me. And I love it because what they can't see is so clear to me. And once I show them and they're able to see, it then becomes clear to them. And then transformation is inevitable because it's not until we can see the transition and then make enough of them that transformation is even possible. People try and change by swapping. I'm going to become that. And then they start to see that it's not going to stick because they haven't built anything that they needed around a new identity. So they swap back and they flip and they flop and they flip and they flop because they haven't gone through the transitions to transform their identity to ultimately become a new version of themselves. So I hope this episode is a little bit different to what I normally do, but I really wanted to share with you aspects of what I went through, how humbling and like I said, painful that was for me, but how I look back at that now as a gift, how I embrace what happened now as something that ultimately led me down the path that I feel I was chosen to go down. This is the, the direction that I was meant to go down. Everything happened for a reason. Would I do it the same way? Oh, fuck, probably not. Like I heard a lot of people and that, that's the part that I'm not okay with. It's funny how we're not okay with that, but yet we're okay with hurting ourselves. So as I said that out loud, but ultimately I've ended up where I've needed to end up and you will too, if you are willing to show up, if you're willing to ask the right questions, if you're willing to look at the things that you can control, step one, what can I do right now in my day? That's in line with feeling better. That's in line with me becoming a better me. To then ultimately unlock that small shift in you seeing the possibility of a different reality for yourself. That's all it takes. Unlock that fucker and watch the boulder roll into you being the better you. And like I said, if you want help with that, because sometimes we can't see what we can't see. We don't know what we don't know, All right? Reach out to me, let me know. And I will literally, it's so easy and not even expensive.
to be able to gain access and work through that process with me one-on-one so that you come out the other side with the clarity, with that shift in perspective and with a knowing of what U2.0 looks like and what it's going to continue to evolve into. So I hope you enjoyed that. I'm going to be doing a lot more on YouTube over the next sort of three to six months. I've just committed to a whole plan today. I always love to hear from you. So please comment below if there's something you'd love to dive into, if this related to you, or if you want to know more about that part of my story or other stories that I've had, let me know. I appreciate you taking the time to watch this and I will connect with you all in next week's mindset video.